So what if I told you that there is a $10 DAC amp out there that performs on par with $100 DAC amps of similar use case? What if I also told you that this DAC amp has almost never been advertised as a DAC amp? And what if I told you that it was this, the iPhone dongle? And no, I'm not joking. So this thing is actually kind of a, a sleeper unit. <laughs> so let me explain. So iPhones like this one, um, this is an iPhone 7. Everything after that that Apple has made has moved their DAC and amplification off the actual phone and they moved it to their lightning cable. Now they actually also make a USB-C cable which performs pretty well but not quite as well as the actual lightning cable uh, adapter itself. So none of the sound that you hear from your iPhone after about iPhone 7 uh, actually comes from the iPhone itself. It all comes from this little dongle. Uh, speaking of this dongle though, it actually, and not necessarily the most powerful thing in the world, but in terms of measurements, it stomps pretty hard. It, it's got really, really good measurements. The signal to noise ratio is exceedingly low. Uh, the distortion is also very low. And outside of power, it's totally on par with a lot of $100 uh, mobile phone amplifiers. Now, in some ways, this is not going to compete with your full-size desktop DAC amps. Um, even at $100, and it's mostly in terms of power, this thing is pretty weak. Um, I actually couldn't find exactly how much power this puts out. Now I'm going to assume here, and I could be wrong, but I think it's probably less than 0.1 watts at 32 ohms. So it's not the strongest thing in the world, but there's a lot of other features that go into something like this that make it sound really good, even if it doesn't produce a lot of power. Same with every amplifier. Now I think we should talk a little bit about the build. It's not the greatest. Now of my personal items, I'm not hard on anything that I own. I, I take things pretty easy. I like things to last and I like to have a quality experience throughout the duration of its lifetime. Um, I've used these a lot over the years and I've this is the one that came with my iPhone in 2016 and I, I've never broken a single one, but a lot of people have. Luckily, uh, the cool thing about these is that they're actually the cheapest product Apple makes, I think, uh, but they're $10. And if you buy an iPhone, they're free. Not that I'm recommending going out and buying an iPhone. Now, I do want to give Apple credit where credit is due because with this product, uh, the form factor of this, like nobody would know. Like you'd never think there was more going on than just a conversion of, you know, the, the lightning cable signal to a 3.5 millimeter, but there is actually a lot going on behind the scenes. And something that's sort of atypical for Apple is that they didn't like advertise it at all. And they could have easily sold this for $100. And according to the specs and the measurements, it would actually be worth it. So if you do have an iPhone and you feel like turning it into a little sperm, <laughs> uh, this actually does provide a pretty great experience, although not a lot of power. So there are a couple things I wanna talk about here. One is, Unfortunately, because it's an Apple product, I know there's going to be a few people who are going to absolutely write this off. If you don't have an iPhone, it really doesn't make sense to pay attention to it, although you might want to look at their USB-Cs to 3.5 millimeter because that is also a DAC amp. The measurements are good, just not quite as good as the lightning adapter, which is why we're talking about it and because I personally just use an iPhone. But just because it's an Apple product, I don't think it's a healthy mindset to immediately write it off as bullshit and not something to pay attention to. It is a legitimate product at a far reasonable price, which is despite Apple's uh, general characteristics, and it offers a very good experience. Now, I also wanna talk about powering headphones with this, but I first wanna talk about the distortion or lack thereof that is coming out of this unit. So with other $100 DAC amps, um, outside of a few exceptions, almost all of them have weird distortion issues when you max out the volume. They do not seem to be able to handle uh, them getting to their maximum level. And there's a couple possibilities as to why this doesn't show any audible distortion to me at max volume. It could be that Apple is playing safely within the margins and the boundaries that it knows it can display sound in uh, without distortion or the capabilities of the DAC outperform the potential power output of the phone because after all, this is what's gonna be delivering the power to the DAC and the amplifier to send to the headphones. So if the phone itself can only deliver a certain amount of power, the amplifier itself is only gonna be able to display a certain amount of power. Now, to be honest, I've kind of gone back and forth on to make this video for about six months, but I finally got some really nice IEMs here and some really good efficient headphones like these HE1000 SEs here that uh, really allowed me to add this into the amplifiers that I test with regularly 
uh, to see how the sound stacks up. And this includes the THX 789, uh, the model price stack amp, which is amazing. We'll talk about that in a future video. Also things like the iFi IDSD Pro, which is like a $2,300 DAC amp. Very, very good. And the more I've listened to this, the more impressed I am. So let's take a headphone like this, which is a big, giant, planar magnetic headphone, uh, the HE1000 SE. Uh, this is specifically designed to be a very efficient planar, and you're gonna want efficient headphones with this just because of the power output. Uh, but I'm gonna play a video of mine and just hold this up to my, uh, my face here and not change the audio levels at all. And it's just so you can see the amount of actual volume that this thing puts out. And you can tell there's bass, like it's, hey, what's up guys? it's pretty Josh good. Here. Now I know this headphone looks a little preposterous, but this is all the way turned up and this is about as loud as I would listen to this headphone at a consistent level, um, personally. And the distortion levels are, are very minimal. I would say there's maybe a little bit and it doesn't quite stack up to the same volume on an amplifier like the THX 789, but that's $400 versus $10. So, you know, you would expect it to sound better and it does, obviously, you know, this is not gonna be an end all be all replacement for DAC amps, um, but it's still impressive nonetheless, especially if we're grading on performance based off of cost. Uh, the dongle is actually amazing. So let's put this all together. What are my recommendations for this? Why do I bring this up? Well, I think that if you're on a super strict budget, obviously, you know, $3,500 headphones to a $10 DAC amp, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but still, if you're running efficient headphones, this is just a placeholder for the concept of an efficient headphone. Uh, I think the iPhone dongle, it sounds great. And I don't really see a big reason to upgrade uh, to a mobile DAC amp if your goal is to be super lightweight and minimal in what you're carrying around. Now, this is gonna be obviously, just like every other amplifier, gonna be specific to your lifestyle, your life circumstances and what you're gonna use it for. And that's gonna drastically change my recommendation. If you only listen to music in a chair or a couch or at a desk, something like this doesn't really make any sense to buy whatsoever. And yes, it's just $10, but it, there's no real reason if you're not really gonna use it. Or a lot of you IEM users out there, um, something like this is actually not something I would overlook because while it's not gonna deliver the most power ever, and there are even IEMs here that this, uh, I'm getting towards the top end of output to drive, the noise floor is indistinguishable. It is super, super quiet. And for IEMs, it's very important. And in certain circumstances like that, uh, this actually outperforms really nice equipment that I have. The iFi IDSD Pro that I was talking about, that's $2,300 or $2,400. Uh, I can hear a noise floor with sensitive IEMs. That THX 789, I can hear a noise floor. So all in all, I think this is a highly underrated product. I'm not the first one to come to the conclusion of this either. Um, I'm more just kind of signal boosting. And some of those people who have done the measurements of this, I'm going to leave links in the description below to all the ones that I could find. Uh, I don't have any political affiliations nor opinions about any of these brands. I don't give a shit about that, to be honest. But it is there if you want to check it out. And at the end of the day, I think the kind of biggest thing I keep coming back to you is the fact that it's just $10. Like, that's it. Super low risk, pretty high reward. And you may complain about reliability, but if you're basing it off performance, you could stock up on these by 10 of them, and they're gonna last you for a really long time, and you're gonna get a pretty good result. So, <laughs> unlike a lot of Apple products, you will not hear me say this often, do not undervalue the dongle, <laughs> okay? Thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, my name is Josh, signing off.